Welcome to Business Live Extra, the show that focuses on the business leaders and entrepreneurs fueling Jamaica's economic boom. International investors are increasingly looking to invest here as the nation enjoys a sustained period of growth, having become a model for heavily indebted nations to chart a path to success. Welcome to Business Live Extra. Our guest today is a master of economics, finance, and private sector leadership. He started out as a trading manager in 1993 in a well-known financial institution. In 2000, he became deputy managing director. He was promoted to group CEO, chief executive officer in 2005, and is responsible for the strategic direction of the group. The company was founded in 1992 by a woman in her 50s who wanted to create an investment house where any Jamaican could walk in off the street, take a few hundred Jamaican dollars from their pocket and invest it. That woman was Joan Duncan, and the company is Jamaica Money Market Brokers Limited, or JMMB, and it's more commonly known. I'm sure you'd have guessed it by now. My guest today is Mr. Keith Duncan, Group Chief Executive Officer, CEO of the JMMB Group, Co-Chair of the Economic Program Oversight Committee, EPOC, and President of the PSOJ, Private Sector Organization of Jamaica. Welcome. Thank you, man. Thank you for coming on Business Live Extra. Thank BL you. BL Extra. Thank you know, you. you know, Keith, yes. you you are the group CEO, right? I mean, yes. you, when did you get into this this role? Well, um, as we as um, you just outlined, in um, uh, in 2005, I was promoted to the group CEO. This is after my sister Donna K, my twin sister Donna K. Duncan Scott, um, had her first child. Yes. And she wanted to take, a, to take a break or to take a more reduced role in order for her to grow her two daughters. And, um, and then um, so she asked me to take on the leadership role of, of um, the CEO, right. which I did. And um, yes, yeah, so it, it, it has, I think it has worked out well for all of us. And um, she has raised two beautiful daughters, Nia and Naima, and therefore they have a wonderful family. And she's happy. Okay. And she, she's able to focus on the areas that are important to her to her, which is human resources, culture, training, and really um, getting our team engaged and, on a, and, and um, happy. Keith, you really seem to be shining now. You know, you're mm -hmm. group CEO, um, uh, you know, you're also PSOJ president, you know, and you're also chairman of EPOC. Yeah. I mean, what does this really kind of all mean to you now, you know, coming out of, you know, the JMB fame first and foremost? Right. Well, um, you know, we have always been committed to service and been very much committed to Jamaica and, and in any area that we can contribute and make a, and make a meaningful impact, we are going to be there um, giving it to our best shot. And um, I've always been as president of the Jamaica Security Dealers Association. I've been vice president of the PSOJ in the past. And so therefore, I've always been in, the, um, been in the area of service to my country. And... Um, we continue to serve, and I think, um, you know, we, I have g been given this opportunity to serve, and I will look to try and make a positive impact for Jamaica and all Jamaicans. You know, I grew up in a household where, um, you know, my father is a politician, Dr. D.K. Duncan, uh, is a politician, a firebrand politician, they call firebrand of the 70s, and my mother, Joan Duncan, was a very outspoken, entrepreneurial type of lady, and therefore we grew up in that kind of environment. So we always have a commitment to serve and always wanting to always have the level, a high level of patriotism. You know what I mean? So that, that is just, it's kind of in my DNA. Mm -hmm. So therefore we're just manifesting and we're just um, doing, giving it our best shot because we really want to see Jamaica move from where we are and to manifest our true greatness and potential as a oh. country. We have so much potential and I think we're on a path and we just need to change the narrative become a lot more positive in how we communicate, become a lot more positive about where we are as a country. We know we have crises and we have challenges, but we need to work on them, pick them off, and keep moving ahead and just really work in a collaborative way. Mm. Private sector, public sector, all Jamaicans need to come together and work together to make this country achieve its true potential. potential. Our people are so great. Mm -hmm. Our people are just so resilient. They have to be resilient to survive all the bad management of our economy over the years. They have to be resilient to be able to survive on a day-to-day -day basis 
but they are also that has created a level of resourcefulness in them that are that they're entrepreneurial and they know how to survive so if we convert that into them being able now to to translate that into economic activity and into positive behavior the sky is the limit for Jamaica. Yeah. But, but Keith, you know, focusing on you, and, and you've yes. been quite a quiet wonder for a while, right? Yes. And, uh, and what I'm saying is, you now have these significant posts. Yes. You know, JMB is now in the market for $12.8 billion right. for your APO. Right. Do you feel that it's a little bit of a coming out party for Keith Duncan now? And, uh, you know, you had a lot of persons that you had to really look up to. You know, your mama, right. you know, the founder of JMB, and really, it's now a time, you in the group CEO role, that you're starting to really shine and really adopt the role significantly and, yeah. and the potential glory of JMB. Well, I think, Mark, I'm not too sure if it's a coming out. Um, I, I don't term it a coming out. What I know is that I think I have more confidence of my peers, and I believe that they, my heart is, is, is very, um, you know, I were, it's clean and pure, and I, I'm coming from a place of just wanting the best for everyone. I wanting mm -hmm. the best for my country. And I will put in the work. I'll put in the effort. I will put in the work. It takes work. Mm -hmm. It takes getting granular, rolling up your sleeves, and putting in the work. I'm not just about advocacy. I am about putting in the work to make a difference. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. therefore, I think people do realize that I, um, I will put in the hard work. Yeah. And, and Keith, when you started off at JMB, right. you know, we, we said at the top of the show in 1992, but when you started off at JMB, you know, what position, what department, where, where did you get your hands dirty at JMB? Well, um, I started off as um, a trader. Um, uh, when, I, when I joined JMB in 19, July 1993, my mother, um, you know, I said, um, as in the hotel sector, as in tourism, I was working at the Franklin D Resort group of companies. And I was really enjoying tourism. I was, I was, having, a, I was having a whole lot of fun, right? <laughs> and then my yeah. mother said, Keith, come and join me here at JMB. I said, why do you want me to come? And she gave me this big, huge book on the money market by Marcia Stigum. And I said, read that book, and you're going to come and join JMB. I said, why me? She said, Keith, you're a hustler. So come, I need you to come and help generate business and grow this business. So I joined in July 93 as a trading manager, and we had to build a clientele build a secondary market trading for fixed income securities and, um, ex and, and really open it up to Jamaica, which mm -hmm. we did, mm -hmm. you know? And, um, and, so. and I found it amazing is that, you know, the theme your mom started, you know, love, right. you know, still transcends to your recent prospectus on the APO yes. or additional public offer. Yes. You, know, you know, how most companies don't even get past a decade. You know, right. you know, family businesses. Right. How has that kind of morphed from your trading days, right. you know, be, you being group CEO, you know, all the way to today, where it seems no matter how much money you go back to the market for, you know, yes. your fundamentals are solid, yes. but you continue to be able to get this capital. Well, I guess, you know, um, listen, if we're, we're based on, we have um, what we call our vision of love, and it's just like a mission statement. And it says, what is the kind of environment that we are trying to create internally at JMMB? love, honor, and respect each other. Secondly, what is the kind of community that we're trying to, to build in Jamaica? Love, honor, respect, and stand in, the, stand in our clients' best interests at all times. You know, and what is the kind of global environment that we want? We want an environmentally sustainable environment. What is it that we want for this world that we live in? Mm -hmm. And that's what we practice on a day-to-day -day basis. So it's just a mission statement, but we've gone into a little more detail, and love, at the end of the day, is the bottom line, is the answer. And, and w would you say, Keith, it, you know, that, that is still the culture? I mean, is, is, is that the, you know, kind of the anchor, the culture of the it group? Is, it is the anchor. Yes. It is the anchor of JMMB. It is what grounds us, what keeps us true to our mission, true to our values, right, which is really about standing for everyone's best interests. So you, you could be in a board meeting, even a shareholder meeting, a... Uh, a client meeting and, and even a topic like that could it could come up of course there could be well, a discussion is that is what you are you know so we may somebody may make a point is that point consistent with our values and our vision of love mm -hmm. is it consistent with our values which is represented inside our vision of love and we remain consistent and true to our values okay
You, you said earlier, you know, your mom yeah. said, boy, you're a, you're a trader type, yeah. you're a hustler, you got things done. Yeah. You know, there's not much of you, you out there. You know, what we know is you're successful, you're driven, you're mm -hmm. a fantastic group CEO. But in your earlier days, I mean, where, where did you go to high school? Well, I went to um, three high schools. Um, I went to okay. Glenmuir for first form. So you're an overachiever? Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was because my mother was um, actually the operations manager at Workers Bank. And she, they, she, they were kept transferring her from branch to branch to yes. really solve the issues and the problems that they were having. So, so she moved from, um, you know, when my mother went to work at Workers Bank as a teller, um, and she got promoted to operations manager, and she left, you know, after her five children were, um, were in school, that's when she decided that she could go and work. Because my, my mother and my father actually um, were, um, were divorced. Okay. And, my, and my mother, um, uh, so we, five of us, my five siblings and I, we grew up with my mother. Did, you did your mom get, you, get the idea in those days for JMB during No, you know, actually my, days, when or? my mother left my father, she became a dressmaker because she wanted to stay home with her children. Okay. Right? And then when my, my, my brother David um, went, to, went into prep school, she then got a job at Workers Bank because, you know, she wanted to you know, to really explore her, the possibilities for her, because she got pregnant with myself and Donna, and Donna as twins in Montreal when she was at McGill, McGill, McGill University. Mm -hmm. And therefore, you know, and then, uh, and then even my father, my mother eventually separated, and she, we grew up with my mother, and my grandmother is extended, and uh, my father was always there, but, um, you know... In, but family was always But it was, it was my mother and the five, yeah. and then, you know, so she left, and... Um, when my, 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 my brother left, um, um, you know, moved into prep school, that is when she, you know, went out to work. And then that's when we were in high school. And then she's get, getting transferred from branch to branch. So we moved from Glenmere High School, from Maypen, to Montego Bay to Cornwall College, and then to Mandeville, Manchester High School. So I went to three high schools. Mm -hmm. I got you. And, and university-wise, you know, after you completed that phase of your life, yes. where did you head off to? Well, um, so therefore I went to university at the University of Western Ontario. Mm -hmm. um, and after university, I, when, while I was in university, I did a business project importing seafood because my cousin from Montego Bay, Mark Hall, he used to um, produce um, smoked marlin. So I said, you know, I, I had to do a business project. So I said, I'm going to import um, smoked marlin into Canada and, um, to, as a business project to um, import seafood from Jamaica. So I did it as a business project. When I graduated, I said, well, let me use so this project. You, so you got the entrepreneurial bug from early, early on? From early. Okay. From early, because when I, from my, um, you know, when I was in um, sixth form, I used to have my own little chicken farm, and I used to have my own lawnmower, so I had to earn. And, and were your, you know, in those days, were your, was your mom, dad, your mom supportive of your entrepreneurship? Well, my mother and my grandmother, especially, was very, well, they were very, and, um, were very supportive of my entrepreneurial venture. So therefore, I'd have a, in sixth form, I had like, I like almost 600 chickens in three different sections, and I would okay. and I would process. You and I would have all my sisters siblings or? pluck. No, okay. their job is to pluck the chicken. <laughs> my job is to kill the chicken. My sister's job is the sister's jobs were to pluck the chicken, and we package and we sell to supermarkets. Excellent. You know what I mean? So. All right. Yeah. And we take our first break on Business Live Extra. More with Keith Duncan when we return. Welcome back to Business Live Extra. We're talking to Keith Duncan, Group CEO, Chief Executive Officer of the JMB Group. In addition to overseeing a regional financial powerhouse, he's also had a major role at the Economic Program Oversight Committee, or EPOC. But what exactly is EPOC? Exactly. It's a group that was set up in 2013 to monitor the implementation of economic reform measures under Jamaica's agreement with the IMF. International Monetary Fund. The 11 person team includes private and public sectors and civil society. It has worked closely with both the JLP and PNP administrations over the past seven years. The group has monitored fiscal, monetary, and financial sector indicators under the three year precautionary standby agreement, PSBA. Jamaica has now successfully completed the IMF program, so let's find out what is next for EPOC. 
how can Jamaica maintain the focus on the growth and job creation while maintaining fiscal responsibility. Keith, welcome yes, back. Yes, ma'am. Before we jump into EPOC, you yeah. know, and all of the amazing things that you're doing, we just want to hear a little bit more about the chickens. Is right. did, did you give, did you give the siblings all of the profitability? No, no, no. They would get free food. Free food. Yeah, they'd get free food. I mean, we run a boat and everybody get to eat them chicken and rice and things. <laughs> so from those no days, no sure, no no dividends were no dividends. <laughs> so from those days, you're a master in profitability. <laughs> right. Earnings per share. Of course, That's earnings great. per share. Yes, earnings per share. I like chicken. it. All right. So you know that brings us to, to this this epoch now, yeah. right? And and you've really taken epoch in a different direction yeah. than I would say Mr. Biles before, right. you know, know the Gulf, right? You know, yeah. you know, he would have a lot of, you know, updates and, you know, yeah. kind of quarterly management programs. You know, you're now bringing it to everybody, right. you know, underserved Jamaicans, everybody. Right. Um, you know, what's what's the deal with EPOC? You know, is it is it still relevant, yes. number one? You know, what's happening with it and, and yeah. uh, what's your spin on EPOC? Well, as at um, November um, 10th, the, um, the IMF precautionary standby arrangement, the economic program that we had with the IMF officially came to an end. Okay. So now Jamaica is on its own. And, and you know, sometimes even I'm confused. Is, yes. is that a, is that, was that a six and a half year arrangement? Was that a 10 year arrangement? I mean, what, yeah. what, how, how no, long were we under this arrangement From for? November 2016 through November 2019 was a three year program so a precautionary three years. standby arrangement. Okay. Prior to that, we were in another three year program with extended fund facility. Okay. Right? And um, the precautionary standby arrangement was not a borrowing arrangement, but we would have access to over $1.6 billion as at the end of the program, towards the end of the program, of cash that we could draw down as a standby arrangement, almost insurance, if we were to run into a crisis, if we have a natural disaster, if, um, you know, that was the standby arrangement that we had in place. And that's gone now. That's gone. Jamaica has now built up reserves to gross reserves to 3.6 billion, net international reserves to over $3 billion. We have to stand on our own two feet and we have to build those reserves on our own. So we don't have the ability to call to draw down on the IMF if we run into a problem because we're no longer in an economic program. Jamaica is in its own economic program. And that is what I have right here, the economic program of Jamaica with all the targets that we have. This is a new one as issued by the Ministry of Finance and the government of Jamaica with their new targets, their new policy commitments that EPA will be monitoring the whole macro fiscal elements of that program. Okay. And, um, and um, so we're in place for a year. So we must In the be... first instance. Right. Until um, we have the fiscal council in place. And we have um, um, greater and, central and bank independence and, and autonomy. And when you say fiscal council, yes. what is the fiscal council? The fiscal council is, a, um, is really a body that oversees the fiscal affairs of the country, ensuring that we're staying with our fiscal rules. Who, who, who puts that in place? Or so where, the fiscal where rules was um, in 2010, I believe, the Fiscal Responsibility Act was put in place, mm. where we committed to a country, as a country, that we would take our debt to GDP down to 60% in 2025, mm -hmm. 26, that we would run at a particular point in time, and I think it was 2018, um, wages to GDP, public service, civil servants, wages to GDP of no more than 9%. So therefore, total um, compensation to um, our public servants could be no more than 9% of GDP. But, but Keith, it's, it's, it's fascinating information. Yeah. Is it, I mean, the Fiscal Council, is that MOF? Is it BOG? No, it's is independent. It, so it's fiscal independent. Council will be independent. It'll be very technical. And because mm. EPOC, we're all full-time people. We don't get paid to be to do this EPOC work. Right. Right. And therefore, the Fiscal Council is full-time technical people who are going to review the budgets, Review the um, review the fiscal forecast. So there's a there's an Re office. There's yes, an office there's for, an for the office fiscal that is going to be that the staff will be employed, and their job is okay. to make sure that the numbers make sense. Okay. That they add up, that they that they are consistent with Jamaica's fiscal revenues rules, and expenses. Revenues, expenditures. That okay. They, that the underlying assumptions that drive revenues that they are correct. The okay. underlying revenue. Um, uh, um, assumptions that drive expenditures and the whole fiscal profile of the country are correct because you don't want to have a minister of finance who sets ambitious revenue targets mm -hmm. and, um, and, um, and then sets expenditures 
in line with those revenue targets. And then we end up running deficits, and then we end up increasing our debt levels once again. Understood. You know what I mean? We cannot, go, we cannot return to those days when we were running fiscal deficits. Because prior to um, the engagement with IMF, we were running fiscal deficits for 30, 40 years, maybe one or two years we ran any kind of surplus. In other words, we, um, that we were spending a lot more than we were earning, and our debt levels were increasing. Mm -hmm. So we have reversed that trend. Our debt levels are now 94% of GDP, still around and at the $2 trillion limits, Jamaican dollars. In place. But um, our GDP is growing. Our debt levels aren't increasing nominally, but also the debt levels are coming down in relationship to our total products and services generated as a country. So Does EPOC and EGC collaborate? From time to time, we will, will. Um, we'll get together to see, um, to um, exchange notes, right. see how we're doing here, and see what, what's going on in the, um, on the growth side. How are they side. doing with, um, with their own targets? Mm -hmm. And how are they doing with the policy commitments that they agreed to and signed off with the GOG, government of Jamaica, around? Right. And then we will say what's going on on the fiscal and on the monetary side, right. and are we being accommodative enough to support growth? Right. But the fact is that, and I mean, people say, well, the EG said we were going to get five and four. And we're nowhere near there, right? Yes. In fact, our medium-term projection for growth is 2%, mm -hmm. right? No, as the GOJ's um, projection. Now, what we have to realize is that um, Jamaica, for many years, was not in a good place, right? We, we, we ran an economy where we, we jumped from crisis to crisis to crisis. So we never, ever had the stability that, that, um, that is required for an economy to really settle down to really to be able to, and to generate the resources required to really invest in the key areas that we need, being infrastructure, so human capital development, you know, and, um, and health and education, to really put the resources there because that is how you get your nation to be more productive. But we, didn't, we, we, we weren't able to run a stable economy, crisis after crisis, and therefore we did not run our, a fiscally responsible economy, and therefore... As a result, many of our, many of our um, the key areas that we should have been investing in suffered. National mm -hmm. security. For the first time in many years, last year, we invested $21, 21 billion dollars in national security. Mm -hmm. No, we, because, so we weren't modernizing our force. We weren't giving them the our police force. We weren't giving them the equipment. We weren't giving them the forensic ability, the investigative capacity, capability. Mm -hmm. We weren't equipping them to win. But yet we would turn around and say the police not doing a good job. But we never invested in them. We didn't train them. We didn't uh, give them enough training. We didn't okay. invest in um, you know, modernizing the force. Then how can you expect them to win? So, so, so do you kind of buy into, I mean, I know there's kind of a saying yeah. that's been around for a while that we yeah. were, we're kind of like an infant or a child for a while. And we're now finally kind of yeah. blossoming into kind of an adult. Yeah. And but we're growing up as a country. Uh, we're growing so up we, as a country. So we've had a lot of growing pains. But... Um, as, but many people, we have had to sacrifice, mm -hmm. sacrifice greatly, or Jamaican people have had to sacrifice greatly for us to be here. Mm -hmm. And therefore, if I am over 30, 40 years, we are struggling as a country, and I'm not seeing the benefits in, f uh, to me as an individual, then I get skeptical. Yes, yes. Then I get skeptical, and I say, is this, real, is this Jamaica really constructed for me? You know what so, I mean? So sticking up in there, yeah. is that really where kind of this epoch on the corner, which, which I really like, you know, it's, yeah. in a, it's, it's broadcast in a glena quite a bit. Is that kind of where, you know, when, when persons say there's two Jamaicas, there's two societies out right. there. Is that one of the purposes of epoch on the corner to try and really drive home that, yeah. you, know, you know, you're not seeing the benefits today. It's a long run, yeah. you know, matter. Is, yeah. is that one of the purposes of it, Keith? Or? That's exactly one of the purposes. And, one of the pur and it's also to demonstrate, to show them where, where are the opportunities in Jamaica? Mm -hmm. As we settle down, what, what can they expect as a country? As fiscal space opens up, we can see that there's more infrastructure work uh, occurring, that we should start to see more work occurring in the hospitals, that we should start to see more work occurring in training of our people. So therefore, we're saying um, you have sacrificed long and hard for us to get to where we are today because we did not invest in you, the people, because we just did not have the resources to do so, because we didn't run a good economy. Now it's opening up. You as a people, you now need to understand that resources will become available. So therefore, 
um, for investment in the human capital of this country, mm -hmm. right? Secondly, that there are business opportunities that will emerge because we have a much more stable environment. Interest rates are much lower. There is more, it's easier to access finance, and we have efforts around that. So now you need to also partake and ensure that you use your entrepreneurial skills to grow as individual business people and also to train your children in the areas that Jamaica's economy will grow, tourism, logistics, manufacturing. Train up your children, send them to heart, send them to um, all of these training schools, make sure they get a good education yes. so that they can be prepared, prepared for a new economy. Yes. So this is what you do with Epoch and the corner. And Give them the reality, tell them how it, what, what it means for them as individuals and as a country where we are going. And, and you know, in layman's terms, keeping it simple, mm. you know, something that I even struggle with again is, you know, the, the five and four, right? Yeah. Um, is it a case where all this like, activity we're seeing in the country, Keith, is not captured in the GDP figure? Or is it a case that GDP is an outdated metric in Jamaica? Or is it a case that really we need to be upgrading st the statistics or do we need right. to explain it better to the people? Does statin need to more tell us what is in GDP, break right. it down to us? Does JIS, our information service, need to come on CVM, yeah. tell us what is you know, in, um, mm -hmm. in the figures. Recently, there's been some quarterly statistics published in the newspaper mm -hmm. um, that tell us exports, imports, right. GDP growth. But, you know, just like the Big Mac index, you know, can yeah. we see from EPAC or can we see from, mm -hmm. you know, EGC, something that tells us how is GDP calculated? Right. Uh, we see five cranes in Kingston. Right. A man said, boy, right. GDP up. But that's not really how it's calculated. Right. Right. Um, exactly. I mean, v GDP is about the value added. Mm -hmm. And um, of course, um, you know, Statin and all of these bodies, they on their website. Right. And, um, and they, they, all the information is there. Mm -hmm. We just need to reach out for it. But of course, there can be a public education program. But GDP and in, in how it's measured, it's re the bottom line to GDP is that you must add value. So if you are importing, if your economic activity is really about trading, buying from, um, buying from uh, international markets, goods and services, and selling it to your country, there's not much value added. Right, okay. There's not much value added because most of your inputs are imports. If you, if you plant, um, if you're in agriculture and you grow from ground and then you process it and then you export it, that is when you have significant value added. Mm -hmm. So what are the sectors that give you significant value added? Are like agriculture, manufacturing, mining, and all of these things. Because, um, and if you're especially, if you move bauxite to alumina and export, that is more value added than just exporting bauxite. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. therefore it's value added. And also, what, is, what has happened also is that if you have, you're creating low skill jobs, you know what I mean? Then, therefore, there's not much of value that you're adding. Right. So we now need to move down that value chain and create higher value jobs. So, so our economy has moved yeah. a lot to a service, a services right. economy. Right, moved to a service mm -hmm. economy because um, we really got impacted by, by FinSAC mm -hmm. and we lost a lot of our entrepreneurial class. We're just now starting to rebound. Just mm -hmm. now starting to rebound. We see young entrepreneurs coming up, looking for solutions, using technology, and that is how you start to grow your economy. Yes. And, but you have to stimulate the growth through access to finance, training up our people in terms of entrepreneurialism and how to run a business and how to, um, and how to identify opportunities and, you know, how, you know, and how to grow a business. Perfect. Yeah. That's, uh, no, that's, that's great, Keith. Yeah. And we're, we're taking another break on Business Live Extra. When we return, we'll discuss Keith Duncan's latest role at the Private Sector Organization of Jamaica, PSOJ. Welcome back. We're talking to Keith Duncan, a man of many roles. He's Chief Executive Officer of the JMB Group, Chair of the Economic Program Oversight Committee, EPOC, and the President of the Private Sector Organization of Jamaica, PSOJ. He took on this latest job in September, making the fight against crime a national effort is at the top of his agenda. He wants to partner with the government to penetrate gritty communities and dismantle gangs at their roots. 
but also on his list of things is to tackle his growth, which is why he's focused on human capital development and governance. Let's continue the conversation with Keith Duncan. Keith, it's yes, great to be back with you. Yes, sir. As the head honcho of PSOJ, mm -hmm. what, what is at the top of your agenda right now? Well, at the top of the agenda, um, you know, we, we are focused on inclusive growth as a country. Inclusive growth means growth of, for all Jamaicans to benefit. Mm -hmm. and, um, but at the top, number one priority is crime. Crime, is really, crime really has an impact on our society. You know what I mean? Um, it, it impacts confidence. It impacts, um, confident impacts uh, a business, you know, thought process in relationship to, do I invest? You know, uh, you know crime levels are a real deterrent to, uh, to just our way of life. And therefore, we really have to address it once and for all. Now, we want to use the example of um, EPOC to provide some oversight and civil society coming together, public sector, private sector partnership in, in, in supporting the government and providing oversight to the government in its crime fighting efforts, mm -hmm. right? So therefore, there is this whole um, um, effort that's on the way where the prime minister and the leader of opposition have met and to come to some consensus around the key areas around our crime strategy as a country. This we believe to be very important because we, Jamaica cannot be unsure and we cannot be, um, we cannot, we cannot be uh, not clear and don't have the clarity around what, uh, as, as, as a country, what, I, what is our crime strategy. No, we have to ensure that the social intervention efforts are getting to those communities that are vulnerable and are producing those, um, the, the violence producers mm -hmm. that are generating those violence producers. We need to get into those communities, give those youth some hope, options, and opportunities. Because mm -hmm. really and truly, I mean, the, the quality of life that these, that these young people live and they, and they, in these inner city communities is really terrible. Mm -hmm. So therefore, what options are you giving them as a country? So therefore, we have to ramp up our, our, our efforts in social intervention, in sustainable programs, because we have been doing social intervention for many years, but all three pieces need to work together. So we need to get the social programs going into these communities so that we can give our people that are, that ha that are not seeing the options or, or have the hope that their and their children will be able to achieve inside of inclusive growth. Growth. And, and Keith, if all of the private sector organizations, let's say, yeah. including PSOJ, are yeah. united on this, what would you say, though, out of those top three topics are different than, you know, what we've heard three, five, seven, ten years ago? What, what, what's, what's different in that, yeah. you, you know, kind of coming out release? What's well, the difference right now is that um, I think as a, as private sector bodies, Jamaica, um, Jamaica um, Chamber of Commerce, right. the PSOJ, the JMEA, right. we are all very much focused around getting crime to be a national effort and not a political effort. Mm -hmm. So we're, we want to remove crime out of the political arena and have, if this is the crime plan, we're all getting behind it as a country. We're going to educate. We're not going to create any noise or mischief around a crime plan that we, are, that we have in place. If anything, what we're going to try is we're going to try and make this plan better. We're going to learn along the way. We're going to make modifications to the plan that we have so that, so that we can ensure that we can take serious crime, the serious crimes down, take our murder rate down so that um, we can generate more confidence for our people, for investors to invest in our country. The right. difference is that we're all at the table agitating to ensure this, this happens. Right. So there's a push. There's there a force. There is a push. That's going towards there's it. There's a push and there's a receptiveness from the prime minister and the leader of opposition. To now it's about us pushing through to right. ensure that we get there. And, and, and let's say from an onlooker, if they say that there's a gap, um, right. potentially where I'm a young man in a community, I've gone and got my education, I have some loans or I've borrowed some money, 
And I, I, I'm respectful of the bank's regulations. I'm respectful of the security mm -hmm. dealer's regulations. Um, I have to go to a microfinance firm to get some money to go and start a business or hustle. Right. Or the interest rates are too high. So right. I have nowhere to go and get capital in right. this country, Jamaica. Right. Right. There's a gap. There is where, a gap. Where is the PSOJ stance? Where, where is the private sector stance on there's a missing piece in the society where right. if you're not a rich man, you cannot get capital right. in the society, but you can get a car loan. Right. Where, where is that? Yeah. Well, we are very clear that um, access to finance is a major issue for, Jama for Jamaican businesses, small, micro, small, and medium enterprises. Right. right? It's a real issue. And, um, and, it, and, must, and it must be, be, be assisting crime. Right. Yeah. Well, um, we're, we're not seeing the growth levels because let me explain one statistic. Total um, bank credit is um, the... Small and medium enterprises generate over 50% of Jamaica's um, GDP. Wow. Okay. And they create employment for 70 to 80% of the workforce, small and medium enterprise. Yet they only get 10.7% of total bank credit. So there's a major gap. Amazing. Yeah. So therefore, they are surviving on borrowing money from family, from friends, yes. from um, borrowing, borrowing expensive money. Money. Mm -hmm. And therefore, because they're not accessing it from the banks and, and, and the other traditional financial institutions, right? Mm -hmm. So therefore, we have, we have a major gap. Now, if we were to close that gap, the, what, what, um, the, 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 this could stimulate real growth yes. levels. That potential added exactly. growth. Exactly. So therefore, yeah. we, you know, in January, in July of this year, we launched our PSOJ SME Access to Finance Project around addressing this specifically. Because okay. as the government of Jamaica start, um, reduces its borrowing appetite and start borrowing from the markets, and also that the corporates now, um, you know, are now priced, you know, yes. they, they now dictate the rate at which they were, the banks are going to lend to them, then this banks are, the banks are now incentivized to open these markets to the SMEs, to open these books to the SMEs. Mm -hmm. But the SMEs have to be ready also because we haven't trained them up. We haven't trained them in financial literacy. We haven't trained them in how to run a business. We haven't trained them in financial analysis. We haven't trained them in how to generate financial statements. We haven't trained them. We don't have it as a part of our curriculum anywhere. I think now in the universities, now you have entrepreneurialism, as entrepreneurship as, a, as courses. Mm -hmm. However, we have not equipped or small and medium enterprises. With so we're focused around working with the banks, one, to adjust how they look at small and medium enterprises, and two, to work with small and medium enterprises to lift their game so that they can become bankable, so they can access finance. Access. And what would you say? I mean, while, while the SMEs may knock and say, yeah. you know, we need more access to credit or ac access to equity, you know, on the other side of the equation, you know, in the financial sector, yeah. the PSOJ, is it the financial reporting is the main issue that you need to see improve in the SMEs, or is it a, is well, it a, there is always, a host of other things? There is issue of government. So we've been working, we've been working, and November 22nd is our next workshop. But we have um, six active work streams that are actively okay. working around adjudication, around in, introducing new products for SMEs. And this is PSOJ, Keith? PSOJ. Okay. PSOJ that's doing this. And so therefore, we have three products, reverse factoring, factoring, and seasonal cash flow products. Because SMEs don't necessarily have monthly cash flow, but they have seasonal adjusted cash flows. We need to create products that meet that need. Okay. We need to create products for factoring where um, yeah, uh, so a, a small and medium enterprise supplier supplies a large corporate, but they take six months to pay. Mm. No, we know we now need to be able to, to be able to, ease to that burden. give yeah. them access to finance so that they don't need to wait six months. They can borrow against their receivables. Okay. That's called factoring and reverse factoring. Right. So therefore, we're working on programs so that the, we can free up the cash flow, unlock the supply chain, so that the small and medium enterprises can do more and more business. Mm -hmm. And also that's product program. And then mm -hmm. the credit adjudication process with the banks and other financial institutions to adjust how they book loans for a small and medium enterprises because you can't do it the same way you do a corporate. <laughs> yeah, of course. Right? Yeah. And then we have to work with the small and medium enterprises to educate them. And we're working with the ICAJ, mm -hmm. Institute of Chartered Accountants, to design products and services 
for to, to for the SMEs so that they can provide information to the banks. Mm -hmm. And we're also working with the credit bureaus to ensure that credit bureaus can generate reports and scores for, for the banks. So therefore, we close the gap. Right. And a few years from now, whether yeah. it's uh, two, three, four years, what do you want to be known for from the PSOJ tenure? Where, where do you want to take this PSOJ well, stewardship what, to? What we want, we, we want an inclusive PSOJ, right? We want to see more medium-sized um, companies being, a, being, being um, engaged in the PSOJ. We want to see young entrepreneurs get engaged. Becoming members. Becoming members. members. So our strategy is to really grow that, grow that effort. So maybe not just known as the traditional, no, you no. know, upper echelons We're of the economy. We're evolving as a country. We're right. changing as a country. Our entrepreneurs, we look different as a country. Our entrepreneurial class looks different. Mark, you look different than right. the traditional guy. You know what I mean? You, are, you do business different from how your father did business. Mm -hmm. You know, so we're doing business differently. That the PSOJ needs to reflect how our market realities are changing and how our people are changing. On to the FX now. Right. Today, again, Central Bank sold about 40 million US into right. the market. Right. Do you, do you see the FX at crossing over 140 all time low, 142? you know, roughly today as a major issue or just a symptom of, you know, market dynamics? No. Um, at the end of the day, right, um, your currency is equal to, it's your value. So you need to earn more than you spend. So therefore, you need to export goods and services, right? You need to earn more than you spend. No, if your country, for you to have a stronger currency, than, than, the, than the United States of America. You have to have a stronger economy mm -hmm. than the United States of America. So we could never, we, if you just deal with reality, right, and, and there's a model called the purchasing power, purchasing power parity model. Yes. Difference between inflation. Our dollar is supposed to weaken against the, the U.S. currency. We don't have a fixed rate currency. We have a floating rate currency. And once, if our, if we're, our dollar is to, remain, to get stronger than the U.S. dollar or our, our trading counterparts, mm -hmm. we're going to have to have, strong, to have a stronger economy. Mm -hmm. There's no two ways about that. We're going to have to generate, while we're generating enough flows right now, we're going to have to generate significantly more flows that there's more supply of U.S. dollars to bring down the price than the demand. Mm -hmm. Right now, what is happening is that we are very import, we're an import-driven economy. Therefore, all of our, most of our inputs are we purchase from international shores. But, but do you think psychologically, Keith, because the narrative has been, okay, we have so much U.S. now, you know, we're over 3 right. billion U.S. in NIR, you know, as you said, the country is now off the IMF yeah. program. Things are booming. Things are going great. Um, our stock market is doing great. We're right. just on Wall Street. Right. That person's perception is, is that the dollar should just be strong then. You know, I mean, that's... That's the layman's perception. The man in the street says, well, we should just be at 130, 135 because the minister says things are great. The PM says things are great. NIR is strong. So persons are having a hard time visualizing then why are we at 142? Okay. And, it's and, it's, and, and why yeah. are we selling 50 million US? Mm -hmm. Why are we now selling 40 million US? It, it almost is coming across as a, an oxymoron to the, yeah. to the nation, in so other words. We're, 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 we're a small open economy. Mm -hmm. Everything comes right down to demand and supply. So if in the month of October you had a heightened period of demand for the US dollars and the supply was the same as in October of the previous year, then you will have the, the price of the currency moving. Yes. Now, the Bank of Jamaica um, is supposed to act or intervene like they did today right. when there's a disorderly market. Right. So when they, the definition of a disorderly market is there's extreme volatility, and this is when the Bank of Jamaica steps in. So if they see gaps in the market then, and um, the market becomes disorderly, the Bank of Jamaica should step, step in to smooth out any market imba imbalances, right? And that's what has occurred today, as you just mentioned. And, um, mm -hmm. the, and, they, and there will always be, in a small open economy, where you have some periods of high demand, greater demand, and periods of greater supply, and what you should really have a two-way th two movement who, in the market. However, you're not really, mm -hmm. at the end of the day, the only way for our dollar to strengthen in a sustainable way is for us to earn significantly more to, from, to in, from exports and services in foreign currency than we currently earn. You are a great buy at 30. 
How do you feel about your stock price at 43? I think um, there, is, there is more to go. There is actually more to go. Um, if you look at our projected forward earnings, you would see that um, there, is, there is more in the tank. Mm -hmm. There is more in the That's tank. Good. If you analyze your earnings, you're looking like four and a half billion or more. It's, uh, it's doing superbly well right, right, compared right. to 10 years ago. Right, right. Well, yeah. most definitely. So um, we have a great team. You know what I mean? And my team has allowed me to be able to take on other areas. You know, we're a seasoned team and we're really a focused team. And, um, and I must acknowledge, you know, um, my team for the effort. My, the ex my executives, the entire JMB team, Jamaica, Trinidad and Dominican Republic, because we're really making things happen. You know what I mean? So I'd like to acknowledge that. The bulk our of the, board, our board. The bulk of the earnings, yes, Keith, yes. still Jamaica. Still Jamaica, 70%. 70, 70 but because Jamaica continues to grow, I mean, and if you grow, with, uh, you're a larger pie than, you know, so therefore Trinidad will, will, will grow at a higher percentage growth rate. However, Jamaica's, um, grow, the Jamaica's growth rate, while nominally lower in growth rate, but it's significantly higher. Do, do, you see in, the, in do you see the market just boiling down to kind of NCB, Sajikor, JMB, or kind of the indigenous Jamaican banks eventually? Well, we see it evolving. I mean, look at First Caribbean. We heard of the recent sale to, the, to a Colombian outfit of Colombian um, First Caribbean. So therefore, yeah. the Canadians are, you know, um, you know, Canadians, they exited, Scotia exited the Eastern Caribbean, and, um, and uh, um, FCIB, um, you know, First Caribbean, and um, they're, they're exiting the CIBC. They're exiting um, the region also. So it's going to come down to, to regional players. I mean, and um, we should own um, our, our um, well, there's nothing wrong with us owning our own financial institution as a region and as a country. You feel yeah. as group CEO, you're getting tired or you're just getting started? No, man, we just, uh, we just get going. Get going? We just got going. Just right. get going. We love it. Yeah. Yeah. That's it for another edition of Business Live Extra. Remember, there are no secrets to success. It's the result of preparation, hard work, and learning from failure. We've been talking with Mr. Keith Duncan, Group Chief Executive Officer of the JMB Group, Chair of the Economic Program Oversight Committee, and President of the Private Sector Organization of Jamaica, PSOJ. Don't forget, you can watch us online at cvmtv.com and forward slash business live extra. Thanks for joining us.